You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Welcome, welcome, one and all, ladies and gentlemen, you are tuned in to the Smackdown Rundown here on the Angry Marks Podcast Network and downloaded on iTunes. Yes, yes, it is I, your host, the one and only Nikolai, and I am joined once again by my co-host, King J. The King has arrived. Yes, indeed. This is the first SmackDown after the epic Royal Rumble pay-per-view. One of the best pay-per-views WWE has to offer. One of my personal favorites. And what about you, King? What do you think of the Royal Rumble this year? I actually enjoyed it a lot more than what I thought I was. Because leading into it, I had no interest in it. But... They definitely changed my mind about things. As a show, got off to a good start and it finished just as strong. All right, now we're not going to recap the entire Rumble because there were already basically three shows earlier this week on the Angry Marks Podcast Network to do so. But since I wasn't on any of them and I'm sure you weren't on any of them, give me your favorite moments of that entire pay per view. Um, my favorite moments of the pay-per-view were probably Karma popping up. Um, I actually enjoyed the finish of the world title match where Big Show was hanging on to Daniel Bryan and then Daniel Bryan finally got himself loose and got away. And probably my other favorite moment was... The surprise that the Divas actually had a very good pay-per-view match, and it involved multiple Divas. See, my favorite parts of the Rumble were Karma returning, Kofi Kingston's handstand walk to avoid being eliminated eliminated from the Rumble. I forgot about that. That That was was really good. Yeah, that was an awesome spot. It, It was similar to John Morrison, the way he... Uh, Spider-Man crawled across the banister, but I think Kofi doing the handstand was just pretty amazing because, um, you know, it's it's a simple thing to do, but most people can't do it. But it was a very yeah. e- very unique way of preventing elimination, just like John Morrison. So I'm glad we had another one of those spots. Yeah, definitely. And uh, probably my other favorite parts were... Just the simple fact of CM Punk and Daniel Bryan retaining the titles, not having one month title reigns. Yeah, that was one thing I was worried about. And then we heard about Big Show and Mark Henry both being injured. So I was like, well, they'll probably keep the belt on until Elimination Chamber. So. Yeah, yeah it was definitely. Um, and and we, you and I have been talking about that for weeks on this show. About Mark Henry and Dan- and um, Big Show all both being injured or semi injured, and that kind of leads into tonight's episode of SmackDown, where Teddy Long announced the participants in the upcoming aforementioned Elimination Chamber match, and you and I made our predictions, our picks, and we weren't far off at all. The Listing as it was at the start of the show was the champ Daniel Bryan defending against Big Show, Mark Henry, Wade Barrett, Randy Orton, and the Intercontinental Champion Cody Rhodes. Now, I know I put Sheamus in that match, but that was because I did not pick him to win the Royal Rumble. He is the winner of the Rumble, so he's not in an Elimination Chamber match. 
either of them because he has a title shot at WrestleMania, so he's not going to waste it at this pay-per-view. But what do you think of the lineup for the Chamber pay-per-view? Do you think that was pretty much to what you had expected, or is there any, anybody you would have changed if you had that position? It's funny because that was the exact chamber that I had picked. I picked that chamber twice this year that that was going to be my lineup for elimination chamber. And it exactly happened because for some reason I never thought of Seamus as a factor at all. So it was kind of creepy at the same time that WWE picked my brain and was like, okay, this is elimination chamber. We're going to give Jeff that one. <laughs> yeah, you can tell. They listened to this show. I'm telling you, man. They just don't want to admit it. Exactly. I mean, if you Google wrestling podcasts, angrymarks.com shows up at the top of the list, baby. We, we don't do this for nothing. Exactly. <laughs> but um, yours was pretty much to a T. Mine, I had, like I said, I put Sheamus in that match. But the weird way, in a sense, is I put Sheamus in there because I see him as being due for another world title run, or at least in the title picture. And I thought that was, you know, the Elimination Chamber would be the best way to do it. But they swerved us. They made us think Jericho was going to win the Royal Rumble, but instead Sheamus is. And in a weird way, Sheamus is now being involved in the title picture. <laughs> Definitely. It's, it's like funny ser- how things work out. Yeah, it's it's all serendipity. It all comes right back in the in the weirdest ways. But like I said, SmackDown started with Teddy Long announcing those participants in the rumble in the um chamber match. And Mark Henry had some beef with that because he didn't like those odds of six to one being not in his favor of winning the title. So instead he wanted a one-on-one match with Daniel Bryan and Mark Henry is, is doing what he's been doing the past few weeks. He's been, he has an attitude. He's having his little moments every now and then. And this time it went too far because he put his hands on Teddy long and that's a big no, no to your boss. He got taken out of the elimination chamber match and now he is, indefinitely suspended and this goes back to what we were talking about for the past two three months mark henry has been working hurt this is the way to get him off tv but i don't see him being off wrestlemania this is just probably getting him off tv for a couple of weeks or they might have him on tv because lord knows people who have been fired keep constantly showing up every week but we'll get to that later on but this is a good way to take Mark Henry out of the ring and heal and rest. It is. It's a smart thing to do because you don't want what happened last week on SmackDown where he was supposed to do a spot and he was so injured that he couldn't even get up to do the spot. So writing him off TV for this little bit of time and then I say keep him off for about a month and then like three weeks before WrestleMania, you have him just causing all sorts of hell. Right. But and later, up, messing with Oksana, do something. Right. So with him now being taken out of the chamber, it was announced later on in the night that his replacement would be none other than the returning great Kali. Now, seeing as how he was not not ever a factor in our predictions. Do you agree with him being in the chamber now? Why? Okay. I need the tree to come back to do one thing, and that was pick up his leaves and then leave. I need him on SmackDown. I did not need the great Kali on SmackDown. I didn't need him saving Justin Gabriel. I didn't need him... With that annoying theme that I swear used to be a rap song back in the day. It's close to I it. swear that was a beat for a rap song. It, it was made by the Punjabi MC himself. <clears throat> I 
<laughs> why does why does the tree always have to be involved in things? Uh, I mean, well, when he debuted, I ignored him. I ignored him up until Matt Stryker was his manager for a day. And then I went back to ignoring him. <laughs> Put him in the Punjabi cage and ship all of it to India. And express UPS overnight, whatever you got to do with Jinder Mahal too. Because I don't need to see either one of them. <laughs> Well, before we continue, I just want to throw a huge shout out to the Angry Marks chat room. In there, we have King J and myself. Also, our producer, Killer Kev, is hanging around in there. There's Sierra, Mike316, Mr. Custer, and Seth Draken, whom you can hear every Tuesday night on the returning Ring the Bell for his TNA Spoilers to the Rescue segment. So we want to shout everybody out in there, and thank you for tuning in tonight live on angrymarks.com but going back to the elimination chamber match um, the chat room has been buzzing about it they're saying you know Daniel Bryan has to win because it should be Bryan versus Sheamus at Wrestlemania and that's exactly what I'm thinking too because the WWE championship it's a mess right now CM Punk is still the champion but he has feud a feud going with John Laurinaitis for the for the past 6 weeks and not only that but I still see him and Jericho having a match at Mania especially after what happened on Raw with Jericho just randomly giving Punk the codebreaker to ruin his match against Daniel Bryan which was fantastic by the way until that happened Yeah that was a really good match I think I do think Sheamus versus Daniel Bryan would be a good match because wasn't the last time they had a quote unquote mini feud? Daniel Bryan was the face and Sheamus was the heel. Correct. And uh, Daniel Bryan was the United States champion at the time. And also, a little hidden jewel the last time, last year, I should say, Daniel Bryan faced Sheamus at WrestleMania last year. But it was the dark match before the show started. So imagine, imagine that they they start off with a dark match last year, and they're in the main event a year later. That's crazy. That would be a huge turn of events. I think that would that would be a good move. I think. Right. So I can't wait to see what's going to happen in the next two weeks leading up to the Chamber. I actually like the Chamber pay-per-view. It's one of my other favorite ones because it's all leading to WrestleMania. And you got this big monstrosity of a cell cage that is just with pod. It's such a unique match. and It's not like a hell in a cell. We've seen plenty of those. We've seen plenty of chamber matches as well, but I still prefer that over the other cage match variations. Yeah, and I think the cool thing about the Elimination Chamber, now it's an annual pay-per-view, is that you had the Raw one, you had the SmackDown one, and both matches are completely different. Right. You'll have different spots. Different. Um, everybody has something planned and different for it and that's what I like about it that just usually means though that one championship starts the show and the other one ends the show that's just how it's been now look at the Royal Rumble the world championship match was the first to go last year Wrestlemania Edge defended the world heavyweight championship in the opener you know that match was the curtain jerker so I'm getting used to it now I'm I don't complain about it anymore but it's still fun to see a chamber start the pay-per-view and end the pay-per-view yeah and it's a really good thing because it gives you space and time in between both of them so they're not like kind of back to back you have right. one match then you have the chamber match then you have one match then you have a chamber match and it'll be dead you know right 
especially um, since there's six participants in each match. You know, you don't have that many people to have it every now and then. So 12 guys in the main event, whether the start of the show or the end, it's always good because this brings up and comers to the main event. It does. And it's funny because wasn't it last year or the year before that Ted was in the Elimination Chamber and Cody wasn't? Right. And now this year is the complete opposite. Ted's nowhere to be seen and Cody's the one who has a title and he's in a chamber match. Yep, that was like two years ago when Legacy was around. Yeah, whenever that was, that was like a lifetime ago. (laughs) But we kind of digressed off of SmackDown, but it all leads to the same thing because Sheamus was the one to come out after Mark Henry was suspended, and he broke, kicked him in the face, and that was the end of Mark Henry. He just waddled back. So Rhodes comes out and just basically talks some heel trash. And that sets up a match for the first match of SmackDown, which was pretty good. It wasn't bad. I actually liked it. If the problem was Cody loses another non-title match, the Anaconda Championship is a dud. It's a prop. It's a belt. It's not a title anymore. People forget that he's the champion. People forget there is an Intercontinental Championship. This is a like, third or fourth week in a row that Cody has been in a match and not put the title on the line. Not even want to. I mean, I like when he'll do that, but you have to win for that. Here's my thing. I think like CR said, it's more so his purse than anything else. <laughs> I mean, he's the champion. He needs to defend his belt and keeps alluding to the fact that he wants two titles at the same time. So he needs to put your title on the line, make it mean something. And then people will be like, Oh, yeah, he wants two titles. Not that he has an accessory and he's shooting for one of the most important titles in the business. Yeah, and I can't complain about him wanting to be a double champion. It's just that he makes people forget that he's an intercontinental champion. Yeah, he does. But... I also like the subtle hints that he's dropping about the whole ultimate warrior thing. That he was the first ever person to do it and the rumor going around is that WWE wants to put him in the Hall of Fame. Put who in the Hall of Fame? Ultimate Warrior. Not gonna happen. I read some rumor that Vince has an illusion in his head that he can convince Ultimate Warrior to join the Hall of Fame. I don't know what he's smoking, but he thinks that. Well, I don't see it happening. So, Vince and Warrior and Cody can all just keep dreaming. With that said, we're just going to take a brief commercial break. You are listening to the SmackDown Rundown, and we will be right back. Are you looking for news on Lindsay Lohan going to jail, Oprah Winfrey's book club, and Britney Spears' latest album to hit the charts? Then take a hike, jabroni. Amped Radio has the latest professional wrestling news, rumors, and the best industry interviews. The Bowling Alley, The Shoot Club, In The Room, and much more. Catch us on the web at www.ampd-radio.com. Internet radio that will blow your freaking mind. The 
Osho and the Osho.com each and every week bring you an absolutely awesome product. But if you don't check it out on the Osho.com, then a site of preference would be right here on AngryMarks.com. No question. My man Big Daddy Donnie and your bro Danny O are joined by an all-star cast each and every week. Every Thursday is a brand new episode of the O Show, and you can check it out right here on AngryMarks.com. Hi, this is Peter H., the Hardcore Canadian, reminding you to tune in to Glove Up or Shut Up Wednesday nights at 9 o'clock on AngryMarks.com. So join myself and Stevie J as we review the world of mixed martial arts. That's Wednesday nights at 9 o'clock right here on AngryMarks.com. Welcome back to the SmackDown Rundown. We are here to continue talking about the one and only show that hardly gets talked about anywhere on the internet. So, me and my co-host King J will continue talking about the episode from February 3rd, 2012. And we had feared this, King J... Michael Cole and Daniel Bryan, both of them are looked on as heels. Yet with the recent Daniel Bryan heel turn, it's making Michael Cole look like a face. So he came out in the me- middle of the ring to give a interview to Daniel Bryan. And he basically says that uh, he never thought he would be anything more than a nerd. Never thought he would make it in the WWE. Then he admits that Daniel Bryan proved himself at the Royal Rumble cage match and says he's man enough to admit he was wrong. Does this make Cole on the same side as Daniel Bryan now? Is he going to start praising him now? What do you think? Um, I don't think it necessarily puts them on the same side because Daniel Bryan kind of turned him down. Um, if anything, I think that pissed Cole off. The fact that Dane Ryan told him that this isn't about you, it's about me. So he's playing that self-centered, egotistical heel. So I think they'll probably still clash and butt heads. If anything, he'll give him a little bit of respect, but I don't see him full-fledged aligning himself with him as he is with someone like Vicky or The Miz or someone like that. Yeah, this is something we all had feared and it's just still not coming in clear after all this. But like you said, Daniel Bryan dismissed him and cut this long-ass promo about being a vegan and a role model for everybody. And <sighs> I give Sierra all the credit in the world for putting up with that day in and day out. <laughs> oh my god. I, I just could not stay focused after he just kept going on and on. Finally, he got to the point saying that he could not he will not stand for prejudice against him. He should not be defending the title against five other guys, especially if one of them is the big show. He just runs his mouth about him. And then right before he's about to leave, Big Show comes out and says probably one of the funniest lines he said in a while. He said, "I'm sorry I didn't interrupt you earlier, but I was in the back finishing a great big steak." <laughs> <laughs> Someone need to break that up and liven it up. I mean, I like Daniel Bryan. I've always liked Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, whatever you want to call him. But the dry promos that he's given as of late, I can do without. I'm not for all that. And I know he has health issues. That's why he became a vegan. And 
all all that's good. I don't need to hear about it. I yeah, really know, don't. You know, for me, it's not the the fact that of he's saying he's a vegan or whatever. It's just when he starts his promos, he's speaking calm and softly and that doesn't grab any attention. Um, I said this earlier in the chat room. Um, Daniel Bryan is to heal vegan promos as CM Punk was to his heal straight edge society promos. It's all great. It, it, it comes off as I'm better than you, but at least CM Punk said it with conviction. Daniel Bryan just says it like he's trying to, you know, make you feel bad. And that that is what a heel's supposed to do. But he just, it just, like, he's trying to make you feel bad about yourself in the sense of you should be feeling that bad. Not like you should hate me for saying this type of thing. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, with CM Punk, he was kind of like the cult leader, so you, you wanted to hate him because he was the cult leader. He had followers, and he's the way he comes across in promos makes you want to almost believe him, but at the same time, you're like, I'm supposed to hate you. Whereas with Daniel Bryan, you have the guy who's speaking low, he's in a calm voice. And he's like, okay, you people need to feel bad about yourselves. And it's like, really? Right. And and that was, like I said, that was the problem. At first, he was speaking calmly, but like I said, it got better towards the end because he had a little more conviction in his voice. He started talking about Big Show and he was getting angry. And then... Big Show eventually came out and told Brian that, you know, you can't hide, you can't, no one can save you, you can't climb out, you can't escape. And Daniel Bryan just basically says, hey, look, I might lose my title, but you're not going to take it. He's like, I beat you over and over. And then he starts yelling at Big Show, raising his voice. He starts poking him. But see, the thing that really got it is when he starts yelling, he gets angry. That's where he's intriguing because as a heel, you want us to hate you for the things you say, not how you're making us feel by what you're saying. You know, you don't you, you don't really hurt people's feelings. You just get under their skin. It's kind of hard to, to explain, but I mean, I, I'm not going to say I know for sure what makes a good heel, but to me... From my, my attention is, you know, when, when you sound angry, you're making fun of somebody, you're making fun of the crowd. You, you have to have that, have the tone of voice where you're convincing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't know. Because when Daniel Bryan starts to get angry, I tend to like his promos more than when he's just calmly talking in his normal voice. And I kind of wish he could be angry a little more often, but at the same time, when he gets really angry, he's kind of scary in a way for a 5'8 short kid from Washington. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, anybody can seem scary if you got that right look in your eye. You know, you just have the right stare, the right glare, the right facial expressions, and then you'll have people saying, wow, I'm not going to mess with that guy. So, yeah, that's that's what he needs. Like, when he starts yelling, he has that look in his eye. So that's what I like to see. I want to see more of that from Daniel Bryan. And I'd rather see boring Daniel Bryan, calm speaking, as opposed to farting Natalia, because that shit I do not need. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, if I if it wasn't for the fact that I'm sick right now, I would rip her another new one. But you know, it, I'm it's just not like even, it's, it's not even her fault. Yeah, and it's not even her fault. It's not even her. 
idea is the friggin' writers. Whose bright idea is it to turn this into Family Guy? My thing is, you want to get her over as a face, so you have her fart? No. Farting is not funny when you're 28 years old and you're doing something that you love. And it's, get, it's, me over, get me over as a face by having Nata- having Beth tell me that I'm not worth anything. Saying that my family legacy is a joke. Saying that I'll never be Bret Hart. I'll be like the other hearts who go into obscurity really early. I mean... What the hell? And it's bad enough. All right, I think I'm going into a mini rant here, but it's bad enough. She was on a losing streak. Okay. It got worse when Oksana beat her in five seconds. Now she's farting backstage. What? And she's losing and losing and losing. The way you bring her as a face is exactly how tonight's tag team match played out. Beth Phoenix blind tagged herself in the match and hit Oksana with Glam Slam. That was it. She just said to, to, to Natalia, get out of my ring. That's exactly. how you do it. Exactly. And the thing I'm liking about Beth right now is that she's fed up with everything that's going on. So she's ripping girls' arms off. I'm liking this. That's what Beth Phoenix needed to be two months ago when she didn't know how to counter a roll up. (laughs) That's what Beth Phoenix needed to be. She needed to be rip your shoulder off, so all you have is this dangling arm and going in, glam slamming and be out. That's what she needed. Exactly. She didn't need, I'm pinned up strong, but I can't count on a roll up. Go back to wrestling school. First thing they teach you. <sighs> See, instead of that backstage segment, which by the way, was only to get Santuno Morella to look like he was throwing up. We could have done As opposed to when he was running around with the man who's looked that way since 1980. The man who drew my number in the Royal in the Angry Marks Royal Rumble pool. No, nah, I'm not going to talk about that that fool. But real quick, Rosa got a new outfit. That's my input for the night. <laughs> Good for her. Sierra can stop complaining now. No, because she'll wear that for the next month. <laughs> That'll get her through Elimination Chamber. Provided the tag team champions get on the pay per view. True. Well, like I was saying, you could have done away with that backstage segment. You could have done away with the two minute tag team match and leave on the show even if it's against my will put the Funkasaurus on the TV they cut it out of the TV they edited it show so we get a random Drew McIntyre backstage promo for nothing because It was never explained at the end of the show. Exactly. Brodus Clay, the Funkasaurus, would have served a better spot on TV as opposed to farting Natalia. I didn't get my Naomi fix. Does WWE expect me to get better and I don't get to see Naomi? I need my Naomi. I, I don't like the way this is going. SmackDown has not been its best lately. 
Uh, I don't. I mean, actually, all in all, I was okay with SmackDown tonight, minus the backstage thing with Natalia and Oksana and her sexual innuendos. Other than those two things, I was good with SmackDown. Well, before we get to the main event of SmackDown, let's take another commercial break, and we will be right back. Hey everybody, this is Stevie J from the Thursday Night AngryMarks.com Pro Wrestling and Mixed Martial Arts Podcast. You don't want to miss our fabulous show, Peter H., the hardcore Canadian, and I discuss everything going on in the world of wrestling and MMA every Thursday night on AngryMarks.com. You can check us out there, or you can check us out on iTunes, keyword Angry Marks. That's the Thursday Night AMP from Stevie J and Peter H., the hardcore Canadian It's a great show from the AngryMarks.com Podcast Network. Yo, Radio Land, how you doing? This is Indy from Talking Back Radio. Hey, I'm going to get you back to this show in just one moment. I just need a little time to say thank you to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. If you haven't heard. If you haven't heard. Guess what? The Angry Marks Podcast Network will be playing the latest replay of Talk Impact Radio every Saturday night at the Angry Marks Podcast Network. So check this out. If you miss our live broadcast during the week, don't worry. They got your back, dog. AngryMarks.com. Every Saturday night, check out Talk Impact Radio. And if you want to follow us live, Hey, you want some information on the show, past shows, future shows, maybe a picture of the host. Hey, buy a t-shirt. Go check out our website right now, www.talkimpactradio.com. And we are back with the finale of the SmackDown Rundown tonight. But before we get to the main event of SmackDown, I just want to talk about NXT and WWE superstars. First of all, King J, you and Sierra watch NXT every now and then. Tell me, why is that show still going on? It's almost been... A full year for this quote unquote season. I don't know. I mean, I'm fine with it for the fact that Trent Barrera and Tyson Kidd, two of my favorite wrestlers, are getting matches, and I get the hair vaccine cut promos every week. I'm fine with that part, but then they randomly like to throw random crap in there, like. The three black people on the show are beefing for no reason. Now, Alex Riley just discovered that his theme song is his new catchphrase. I don't know what they're doing with NXT. I really don't. Now, NXT is, seems to be the place of harboring tag teams. Um, the Usos are hanging over there. Kurt Hawkins and Tyler Rex are hanging around. Who? Hey, these guys are, are doing something. Instead, True. instead of just jobbing out to Brodus Clay every week, they're actually doing something somewhere. True. I'll give them that. Nothing and, else, but I'll give them that. And from what I read on the recaps, I wouldn't mind seeing these matches on Superstars. But instead of that, we're always getting freaking Jinder Mahal on Superstars. Always I skipped getting, his matches. Always getting Kelly Kelly and the Bella Twins on Superstars. I want to see NXT storylines or, or Superstars like Alex Riley. Like, I'd rather see him on SmackDown. Okay. I'm done with Alex Riley for the fact that it took him a year and a half to discover that he had a catchphrase. 
<laughs> Not everybody needs one. Well, the fact that this week on NXT, because I watched it earlier in the day, he decides to say, well, if you have anything to say to me, just say it to my face. That's been your theme since before you and The Miz broke up. And you had that tragic breakup. <laughs> In all that time, you couldn't discover a theme. You couldn't discover your catchphrase. Oh, and Titus O'Neil's been having moments on everybody lately. Well, he's I don't. Still, I don't. He still can't Titus cut a O'Neil. promo. Yeah, I, I don't need Titus O'Neil around anywhere. He, I can't stand him. I heard he's had a heel turn though. Yeah. I don't need him, and I don't need. Um, what's the black kid with the afro? Darren Young. Yeah, that fool. I don't need him either. And he Slater's on the show talking, and he kept replaying that he got one win, one win over Trump Moretta, and kept replaying it. Hey, and... the guy is proud. Of getting a win because he has been on a losing streak. And that's his prerogative. I don't need to see it 30 times. And it took Derek Bateman, the most unbalanced person in the world, to tell him, I ain't co signing that. You need to go on. Because <laughs> no. he even went in on him and said, I didn't know you had a finisher. Ha. Huh. I had to Wikipedia to see that he actually had a finisher. Now, the reason why I bring up NXT is all coming full circle because the quote-unquote graduate from the first season of NXT, Wade Barrett, has come a long way. He was a rookie on the season, first season, He won it all. Didn't matter because everybody still showed up. But he's had title matches and pushes and main event matches. He had a main event match with Randy Orton tonight on SmackDown. He has a title match this Sunday, or not this Sunday, Sunday in a couple of weeks at the Elimination Chamber. He came close to winning the Royal Rumble. I mean, this guy has come a long way from NXT. I'm loving his current push, and I loved the match with Randy Orton tonight. It was no disqualification. We finally had a winner. I mean, they broke out tables and chairs. They fought through the crowd. They fought outside the ring half the time. I mean... This was an awesome match. I definitely agree. I really enjoyed this match. And the thing is, it wasn't completely just Randy Orton killing Wade Barrett. Wade Barrett got in a lot of good spots, a lot of good offense. And I don't think that this loss hurts Wade Barrett, which is, I think, the most important thing. Yeah, and the way it played out, Um, They reversed each other's moves, counter, back and forth. No one really had the clear advantage. It was just a really good no-DQ match. I loved it. I loved every bit of it. Um, Just when you think Orton was going to finish the match, Barrett fights back. Eventually, he hits an RKO, but it's not good enough, so he hits an RKO on a steel chair. That was an awesome spot. That was a really good spot. I think the two of them have really good matches together. They have amazing chemistry because Brandy is one of those kinds of people who it looks like he likes to work a little bit stiff and really close with his opponents. And Wade Barrett is the same way. So I think that because their styles are so similar, they mesh really well. Yeah, and since Barrett has been a bare-knuckle brawler at one point, he's had his nose broken 
legit, and he said he's never gotten a fix because he likes the reminder of who he is. And that's admirable. I mean, that plays to Randy Orton playing stiff and, you know, hitting Barrett hard in the back with a chair. Barrett hitting Orton in the back with the chair. This was just a really good, fun match to watch. Not only that, Daniel Bryan was watching backstage with Teddy Long because he doesn't want Big Show around his girlfriend. makes her afraid. Which I think we forgot to mention. AJ was there tonight. Okay, next- here's my thing. AJ, if you're scared, I'm just saying you want to save your boyfriend, but you run out to the ring and be like, "No, don't hurt him! Don't hurt him!" And he walks over to you, and you don't fall out. You don't do nothing. You just stand there, and then he picks up your boyfriend's about to choke, punch the crap out of him. He just grab his hands. He about to swing you around like a rag doll. Like, he's George and you're a little puppy. And she's scared of him this whole time. She's scared of him. And yet he's, he's trying to apologize to her. But, I don't know. I, I like the way they're playing AJ being afraid of him. Big Show apologizing. Um... This doesn't really make AJ heal. It's it's just like you think about it. It could be post traumatic stress, you know. So it's yeah. not it's not bad in a sense because she just left the ring and gave Daniel Bryan a hug. She didn't give show an evil look or anything. It was just like fear. So I, I accept that. She's playing the role well. Oh yeah, she's a good worker, good seller. Definitely. She sold it like a champ when she got knocked the hell out. She sung it like a champ now. I think if she keeps this up, they'll reward her with something a lot better soon. But backstage, Teddy Long told Daniel Bryan that next week he will face Randy Orton. And I think that's the first time they meet each other, and I cannot wait to see that match. That should be another good match. But can I ask you a question? Shoot. He said, I'm not afraid of snakes. I'm going to show you what I mean. AJ, stay back here. And he just starts jumping around the ring. And... I just wanted Kane to just come up and drag him straight to hell. Because I'm like, I'm not for this. Not now. Because Randy Orton's looking at him like, I know this fool did not just, he's not running around the ring. Like, he just did something. <laughs> I love that look on Orton's face. I mean, yeah, Daniel Bryan came out and just, yes! 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 Just jumping around the ring, celebrating whatever. And Orton's looking at him like, who the hell are you? <laughs> uh, it sets up this a good match, Brian and Orton, next week. I can't wait to see that. They've never faced each other. I've never seen them look at each other before. I don't even know if Orton knows who the hell he is. But regardless... <laughs> I don't think he does either. I mean, <laughs> I don't think they've ever interacted. No. At all. Not that I could think of. Actually, no. Not even with Nexus. Yeah, because he was going after the first week, so. Right. And then he came. Wait. They did interact at SummerSlam because I think they were on the same team. Yeah, but was Orton on that team? I don't know. That was too long ago. (laughs) I just remember that's what killed Nexus. That's all I remember from SummerSlam. And Bret Hart still wearing them jean shorts. Yeah, that was when uh, the Nexus lost the SummerSlam main event. And Bret Hart looked like a wet dog. 
Now, I'm looking back, and I don't think they have. I don't think they have either, because when Randy was in the main title picture, Daniel Bryan was in the mid-card slash jobber slide. And then, now that he's in the main event, Randy's been with Wade, so there's never been any interaction. No, Randy Orton was the WWE champion at the time. So, no. Not to my knowledge, Randy Orton has never gone face-to-face or even talked to Daniel Bryan, so this should be interesting next week. Yeah, definitely. I really want to see how that's going to play out because Wade Barrett's still possibly a factor. We obviously know Big Show's still a factor. And then you have the rest of the people involved in Elimination Chamber. Right. Well, I think that's going to do it for the show. Uh, King J, anything else you want to bring up or you want to give your last words? Go right on ahead. Sierra's been saying that we haven't shown her pandas any love, so I guess this is time to say hi to them. I don't know. Okay, hi, Sierra's panda. And speaking of the chat room, I I agree with uh, a comment that Mr. Custer said. He said they need to have either longer matches or less matches. And I agree. I mean, less amount of matches, but they need to go on longer than two minutes. Yeah. They need... I think they need to do what Superstars does and give longer matches where they're needed, but also not skip on the important concept of building storylines with good promos. Keyboard. Yeah. Good promos. <laughs> yeah, and shout out to the Anger Marks chat room for holding it down throughout the entire show. And shout out to Killer Kev for holding his show down in the background with the commercials and everything else that he takes care of during his busy schedule. So, King J, any closing words before we head out? No. Um, another good week for the SmackDown rundown. I hope that SmackDown turns out good next week and that I get to see Naomi. But other than that, no. Indeed, and that's going to do it for producer Killer Kev, my co-host King J. Let's hope SmackDown is good next week. If not, we'll have plenty of to bitch about. So that's going to do it for this week's edition of the SmackDown Rundown. We'll see you next week. Good night, everybody.